morning. Morning. Good to see you. Good to see, you. Good to see everybody. Thanks, Anne, for your share. It's a it's a rough roller coaster ride. This thing. Um. Yeah, it's just so direct, so direct in the body. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the so there's some like changes, I guess, in like there's less belief in thought and. It just seems like things are dropping away really quickly. Um, just conditioning and beliefs and like it feels it feels like the energetic process is like ramping up. And uh I didn't think that was possible, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it it feels okay. like it's there's less resistance here. So um like i'm catching when my mind takes me to future places or you know i'll be like oh you should get up and go get a pastry or something go for you know all the ways that it distracts from sitting with what's in my body you know and uh anyway there's like this kind of increasing stillness that used to be in the background that's kind of more it, I don't know it's like I don't know the words but it's emerging it's more there um it's like stillness even if there's action or noise or whatever's going on and it just I I get this is the story but it just seems like it's when that stillness is there and I'm sitting in the stillness, it just, the energy in my body just ramps up and it just kind of like, um, yeah, it's, it seems like it's speeding up. Mm. I'm just wondering what your perspective is about that. Mm. Yeah, it, it is gonna vary for everyone, but it sounds quite familiar. Um, I think the capacity there is probably just uh, strengthening or, or it's dispersing more, like the shields are thinner. Mm -hmm. So it's just able to process more. Um, so it does become quite intense. It, sometimes the, the difference can be quite stark. Like, I remember it was kind of, yeah, it wasn't linear, so I don't, sometimes it just felt like, wow, like, this is too much. And then, and then something just, I don't know, there was, there was a very clear, um, merging. And then since then, it became sort of lighter and lighter. But before that, it does feel quite intense. Um, and this is all a story, but if I had to guess, I feel like there, there could just be a tiny, tiny bit of the sense of separation still relating to everything. But the walls are so thin that it's just fully feeling everything. So the, the subtle dynamics of separation are still kind of in effect, but, but the filter is like barely there in a way. So that's, I think that's how it feels at this point. And then, yeah, there could be just like a, um, a collapsing completely. Yeah, that's kind of how it feels like. It's like that game Jenga, you know? <laughs> Mm. You, pull the, you pull the sticks out or whatever they're called I don't know yeah yeah it kind of feels like that where like the really big major trauma emotional suppression things have already been pulled out in the last kind of I don't know it just feels like at any point it's just gonna <laughs> 
but um yeah it's like it's not quite like i'm not the mind isn't viewing it as uncomfortable mm -hmm. as much anymore it's just kind of like something that's happening and like there is actually points where i'm like this feels good mm -hmm. like even though it's uncomfortable it just feels good to just be like allowing it to express and uh you know sometimes when i'm at work and like i have a client cancel or something i'll just sit there and just allow my body to feel to feel what it needs to feel and there's not so much like what's wrong what is this let's find the story to it or like you know trying to understand it with my mind or like as a person it's just like oh you know just like removing the label and the story just allowing it to be felt and so I think that's helping a lot because at first there was a lot of resistance to it yeah that's beautiful so that sounds very similar here it felt like slowly it became almost delicious like the sensations that were just there mm -hmm. and the stories couldn't really understand it i couldn't really believe anything anymore yeah um yeah so that sounds sounds really good yeah i mean it does feel it's still you know I could say unpleasant at times, but um, I don't know. I think there's just kind of like a, ever since that innocence kind of understanding of like the innocence, it's been, it's been easier for me to even just like visualize wrapping the sensation in a blanket and holding it and just like, kind of like being more gentle, I guess, with it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my face feels really heavy. Like I have this grief this morning and this energy is just like uh, in my face. <laughs> just like, uh, it feels like my face is going like that. But uh, mm. yeah. yeah, it feels nice to be more gentle. Like something that's kind of, I don't know, that there's a couple weird things. Like one of the things is like, it's, it's it's really easy for me to do that for myself now it's kind of like okay i can do that for myself now but like is there a time where i'm going to be able to see the innocence in other people because mm. totally. i i'm not quite there yet yeah, like yeah sometimes i do and i'm like especially with my clients who i like love fiercely like my message always to them is just like this is just patterning that's kept you safe it's you're not actually consciously choosing to do this it's just kind of like in your subconscious patterning and stuff and so in that way like I can see it in them like it's innocent in them but like other people it sometimes it's hard for me to especially with some of the more cringy stuff like the more ugh, like <laughs> um so that will start to unfold yeah yeah I totally understand what you're saying because I too, when I was speaking one-on-one -on -one with people, there would be just this love that would be there. But outside of that, there was actually no interest in engaging with people or like I could see the horror in humanity in a, a bit more because you just really understand everything very clearly, how it's unfolding and the madness of it all. Um, so your your body, you're just kind of becoming, you're dealing with the information that's constantly being revealed to you in deeper and deeper layers. So of course there's gonna be an adjustment. Um, but I I can say now, like all there is basically is is this unconditional love. And it's not particular to anybody necessarily, there can still be uh, familiarity in this body. So maybe there are some variants, but overall, like all there is, is just pure love. Um, and another thing I can say is that during this time where you're processing your own trauma and all of the intense remnants of the effects of separation there, 
there is kind of this full attention here because it, it's exhausting. It's just, it takes too much energy to process all of this stuff. So there could be more of a focusing just here and allowing yourself to fully just care for yourself in a way. Yeah. More so than others, you know? And then, and then once that really softens, then naturally there is a giving that happens, but you're not doing it anymore. It's just, it seems to happen because you're not processing much anymore here. You're not dealing with much here. So then it's automatic that the, the so-called attention or care can just be focused there. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, it'll, it'll naturally allocate, the energy will naturally allocate to other, because this takes a lot of time and energy. Oh yeah. So what you're saying is like, once that's kind of released and it kind of actually starts to go out. Yeah. And I didn't even notice that it was going on until like months later, I could see in hindsight, like there was definitely a shift that was taking place. Um, and the more that this body replenished itself with energy from the depletion of like uh, processing everything, mm -hmm. and it's, I think it's still happening. It's still kind of replenishing itself. Um, yeah, then there's a natural outpouring, you know? And, and like you said about the face thing, like <laughs> there are a lot of times where I just feel um, tiredness. Yeah. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I don't look that tired, I don't think, but like, I just feel the tiredness at least here sometimes and I think it's just the body like it's just slowly doing what it needs to do bringing back energy in its own time yeah okay uh, one more thing I had this weird thing happen where I was a uh, it was like conditioning around attractiveness and sexuality and that kind of thing was being revealed to me and like you know the way that that my system has in, um, been indoctrinated with that you know and so anyway I'm sitting there and I was looking through these like I was on the internet kind of scrolling looking through these news um, articles have they'll have like a picture of something and then they'll have like a news line underneath it you know and um yeah I was just like wow human humanity is so dramatic we're just like so we're so dramatic and <laughs> um it was interesting to see it's so dramatic and the way that we treat each other is like really horrific I know but um yeah if there's sadness let it come up I'm here uh yeah it's hard to see sometimes it's like oh but one of the things that came up was like like this idea of attractiveness you know it's just like it's just this projected idea onto people and I started seeing people like you know how like they have those wax museums <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I started to see people as like these wax these animated wax people like they're like there's 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 no attractiveness and there's not unattractiveness but it's just like I was just like oh that's so weird we like we, we're like projecting this idea of attractiveness on people all the time and like what's sexy and what's not sexy and like all this layered like conditioning and it was so weird to see people as like neutral and it's just like, I don't know, it was just crazy. It was like, I can't believe we just like go um, around assigning with our minds these like, you know, ideas of sexuality and like attractiveness and like how important that is to us and how, like how much of human behavior is surrounding that, like wanting attention or validation or like wanting to be noticed or because it, it's a value 
thing. Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just it's beautiful. It's so shocking. For me too. I was like, wow, I did not know that I, it's yeah. a constant unconscious judging of myself and others and kind of like measuring them and myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, I had no idea that that was conditioning until it falls away. You have no idea that that is artificial. And that actually it's just very neutral bodies. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was stunned because I, I, like I said before, I was, I sort of fell in love while this was happening. And then the reasons, personal reasons why I was attracted or not attracted to this person, they just started to dissolve. And then what was revealed was pure connection, which unadulterated, like no mental reason. It was just obvious. I want to spend time with this person and they mean a lot to me. Um, and it was so pure. I didn't have a mental reason for why, you know, because I always had a list of what I needed in a partner. And I thought that was true. Yeah. I thought, I thought those were non-negotiables <laughs> and I needed to stick to them. I needed to know what I wanted in a partner because everyone was telling me that you should know and you, you shouldn't go below your standards or like, you know, these different things that are told to you. But when all of that diminished, I was just shocked. Like, wow, it's so much more simpler and so much more beautiful without that stuff. Yeah, because you don't, there, there's not like a story being placed on a person. I don't know, I think it really, um, it, objects, it objectifies people. It turns them into like, something to be gained from or like needed or I don't know I'm just kind of still kind of unpacking it but it's really bizarre <laughs> just like this is unreal how how much time and energy because yeah. there's almost two like like I noticed I went to this like um community spa thing yesterday and I go like once a month and it's clothing optional and um I noticed that there's this thing with the body how it almost like it's conditioned to appear a certain way and I was like kind of sitting slumped over and, and I had this like kind of energy of like you know you shouldn't be sitting this way because it's not really attractive the human body isn't really that attractive a lot of the times <laughs> you know it's like we're not always like these sexual beings that we want to be perceived as but I notice it and I just like sat with the discomfort of that and just like whatever <laughs> like, just like uh, nice um, like who cares I, <laughs> <laughs> just, like, who gives a shit yeah. but uh yeah it's just really the value of that and the condition and the way it, the body looks and all that thing and how how loaded that is and I don't want to care anymore. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't want to, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, that was just one example of how much burden the, the person carries that it yeah. doesn't know that it's doing that or it's not it doing that. It, that is the person basically that energetic care and sense, the judgment, the criticism comparison that energetically is the person. And I, yeah, I also noticed like how much of the seeking energy here was subconsciously, even though, for instance, I had said, I don't need a partner just, but it wasn't, it was a defensive, like, I don't need a partner. I could do this by myself. Um, I noticed like underneath this, uh, if the seeking is there, how much the seeking is actually unconsciously trying to get a partner a lot of the times. And so therefore it gets this job. It has to make this much money. It has to be this type of person. And 
Uh, and a lot of it can be to look good for a partner, for a mate. Mm -hmm. and, and to not have that construct at all is like a ton of weight off. You didn't even know it was there. What a load off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of compassion, empathy. You know, because I used to be, I w had some judgments about it. Like, you know, my past trauma, and like my mom always kind of like stressed this important, like I saw her, like to me, she was naked in in the conditioning of like, I need to be beautiful and like attractive to men and I need to use my body to get what I need. Um, and I saw that and I, and I saw it as ugly. And so I never wanted to be like that, but you can't escape that reality. You can't escape that conditioning and just to like, see it as that conditioning as means to try to feel worthy and lovable. like then I can have compassion. And I didn't escape that. Yeah, yeah. There was, there was no escape from that. There's just impossible. Living in America, it's impossible. Yeah, living at all, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't escape yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So anyway, I thought I'd talk about that because I don't, I don't really hear people talk about that a lot. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. And uh it's it, it's interesting watching that fall away and just noticing like oh people aren't even attractive but they're not unattractive they're just like the mind is putting that overlaying it on and uh that's part of the identity and how we view worth yeah yeah exactly it's so purely what it is and then Yeah. Yeah, it's just massive conditioning and programming everywhere. It's unavoidable. It's very innocent, like you said. And when there is this, because I could also in the beginning really notice that I needed attract uh, uh, attention. Like I needed that person to validate, like they were attracted to this body, objectify it. And only then could I really see like objectification is so innocent because we're programmed and conditioned to do that. Everyone is doing it unconsciously. And of course there are amplified ways of doing it on top of it, but like, as long as the person's there, things will be objectified because you are an object. That's energetically how it literally feels. And then it's projected everywhere. So, you know, it's just inevitable in a way, if that's there. Mm -hmm. yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah so innocent like unbelievably innocent and um yeah yeah I used to like blame myself like oh it was my fault I got into that problem because I objectified myself and I allowed that person to objectify me and but now I saw like, no, it was actually very automatic. It wasn't a choice of the other person or yourself. Not really. And then, and then you also see how much the sexual desire was based on that as well and how innocent that is, automatic. And then you really see like, holy shit, I could not have been any other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. It's a lot to unpack. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing. It's good chatting. Yeah.